Hello and welcome to episode 30 of Carlene's Anime Corner. And Zoe and I are here today to talk about The Devil is a Part-Timer, season one, because this July season two started and we realized it has not been, it's been how long since like, season one came out? Like 10 years, maybe even a bit more than that. No. Maybe nine, maybe closer to nine years. I think it's nine years because I think it came out in 2013. If it came out in 20, yeah, if it came out in 2013, then it's been nine years. Yeah. So a long time waiting for a second season on this one. Yeah, I mean, people were kind of already clamoring for it. I remember back when I first watched it, people were mad there wasn't a season two. Well, it kind of leaves you with a lot of questions about what's going on. Yeah, there is a pretty and, big cliffhanger. Yeah. So I can see why. And um, so I decided this was a good time to rewatch season one. Because season two is coming, yeah. or has come, actually, as of this recording. Yeah, might as well. Miss Zoe, over the uh, last few weeks, we haven't seen each other. Have you been doing anything fun and nerdy other than starting school again? Um, <laughs> I finally got around to watching uh, JoJo Part 6, because they're releasing another batch of episodes in September, mm -hmm. which is really n dumb, because they released the first batch, like, last year. So there's like nine months in between each batch because Netflix is just ruining the schedule release, which I'm a little annoyed about because they also leave on a massive cliffhanger in those 12 episodes. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing. I've been freaking out over them. I love all the characters. It's a lot of fun. And I've also been renovating my fish tank, <laughs> which has been taking up all of my attention for the past couple weeks. Yeah, you told me you were putting some new live plants in. Yeah, I'm adding live plants into my tank. And I also added a, an air bubbler to give them a bit more oxygen. I think it freaked them out because they went <laughs> for like a whole year with like no live plants and no bubbler and just a really weak filter. What kind of fish do you have? I have, okay, I started off with five fish. I had four zebra danios. They're little stripey dudes. Yeah. And one guppy. His name's Tangerine. I love him. <laughs> but I, I left on vacation uh, to uh, for Christmas, and I had my neighbor take care of the fish. I had five fish when I left. When I came back, there were only four. One of the Danios had gone missing. I don't know what happened to him. My neighbor doesn't know what happened to him. And the only clue I have is that one of the Danios got suspiciously fat. Yeah, I was. It has say, stayed suspiciously fat. I, I had fish for a while. I had um, little platies, and they have live babies. Let's just say they multiplied on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I lost, I think one of them ate the other, but I've never heard of a Danio eating another Danio. But that one Danio has stayed fat ever since he went missing. He has stayed the same size. So you have the conspiracy in the fish tank. <laughs> I have a feeling he did something because the one that went missing was the smallest one. The littlest yeah, Danio. Yeah. So like, I don't, I don't know what's happened, but it would, it just, yeah, fish conspiracy. But right now they're doing just fine. They're a little bit freaked out about the whole like renovate like the big like flip like house flip i did mm -hmm. on them but they're, they're, they've been calming down and the cl cl tank looks pretty clear it's it, I, i'm the very life happy plants are nice when i had fish i had a live plant in there and yeah i just hope they still well. i hope they stay alive because <laughs> the thing with plants is you got to get as many as you can and just see how many stay alive i was pretty lucky i bought two of them and one of them did really well and got all big and bushy and the other one just kind of slowly died yeah i got but. uh four plants I got two. I know the names of them because I did a lot of research. I went. Down. I got a uh, COVID, and I had a lot of free time because of that. I mean, not in the first three days. First three days were absolute hell on earth. But uh, I got. But I, I used like the the last couple of days where I'm still sick, but like I'm able. I'm actually conscious to like yeah. do some research on plants and stuff. Cause I've been planning this renovation for a while, and I got. I know the specific species. I got a Java fern. I got an Anubius of some kind. And I got uh, two Amazon swords. Okay. So I ended up spending like $78 worth of plants and plant care stuff <laughs> for my fish tank. These are the most spoiled fish in existence, I swear. Yeah, I have the most spoiled cats in existence. So, <laughs> yeah. My, my cat, he stole half a loaf of bread off the kitchen counter while I was at work today and shredded it all over my floor. Oh, my so God. He, he apparently has a thing for bread. I have not figured out Is why. it Atticus or... Atticus. It's Atticus. Atticus. It's yeah. Atticus. He's always... It's always Atticus. <laughs> it's always Atticus. Well, okay. I will say Leopold, my other cat, he has a thing for Squishmallows. Oh. Yeah. I have a really big one at my house. Don't well, <laughs> he sucks on them and drags them around the house. He sucks on them? He like he like he them. like he just chews on them or yeah. licks them? He he like chews on them and then drags them up and down the stairs. <laughs> I have like a really really big one that was like it's like almost the size of me. 
Because I got it as a Christmas gift. It's like an octopus. And I use it as a pillow on my bed. Yeah. He would probably lose his mind over that thing. He probably would. I have to hide all my Squishmallows on top of tall bookcases and stuff so he doesn't get them. We should get back, get back to the anime. Yes, <laughs> we, we should, should. get back to the anime. We should. Although I, cats are related because my nerdy thing is I picked up a whole bunch of light novels during the sale on Right oh. Stuff. <laughs> and I've been reading the... Um, the white cat who planned revenge on the dragon queen- king's lap. <laughs> that sounds interesting. <laughs> yes, I, I. So apparently, this girl is um, she's college age, and she gets pulled to a fantasy world, and along with a friend in quotes of hers that actually drives her absolutely nuts. And apparently, one of them is going to be like the savior of the country type idea from these evil monsters, and have all this magical power. And the king decides he likes her friend better than her and actually has her banished to the evil dark woods. And it turns out she's actually the one who's the chosen one. Oh, no. But she finds a <laughs> ring that magically changes her into a white cat. So she winds up becoming the pet of the dragon king in the country next door. Oh, that sounds, that <laughs> so. sounds, that sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure at some point she's he, the Dragon King's going to realize she's actually a girl, and I bet you there's a romance in the offing. It oh, just seems boy. like that type of type of route that's going to happen. Question, is the Dragon King like an actual dragon or just a guy with horns? He's a guy who can shapeshift. So he's an actual dragon, but he can shift into human form. Okay. Because I, I, I really feel like that should be a world, thing. That's... The world is set up with kind of like two kingdoms. One has all of like the normal humans. And the other one has all of the magical people, critters. So it's not just dragons. It's other things. And the dragons are the uh, pr- are the rulers. Because one thing I, I kind of want to see a bit more of in anime is like characters who are like like dragons or actual, actual mythical beasts and they stay mm-hmm. mythical beasts instead of just like they turn into like just a pretty little anime girl or just a weird guy with like horns and weird ears. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to see more of that. I want to see like dragon kings who are like actual dragons like most of the time because that would that's well, really there cool. There was an anime I started watching and I really need to finish it. I've only seen the first two episodes. It's <laughs> about a uh, small dragon. So he's like the the runt of the dragons, and he gets kicked out because he's not aggressive enough, not big enough, and to, oh, he goes house hunting with an elf sorcerer, <laughs> <laughs> and it's awesome. Wait, what's this one called? <laughs> oh, I think it's I can't remember. I think it's something like Dragon Goes House Hunting or something like that. I will find out. Is he like an know. actual dragon too? He's an actual dragon. Yeah, the entire time. I have not seen him. Sh- at least in the first two episodes, he doesn't shape shift. <laughs> And there was a Monster Hunter joke in the first one. So, first oh, episode. wait, wait, wait. Is, I think you showed me a trailer for this one. They made a Monster Hunter joke in a trailer. I might have shown you the trailer for it you a while might ago. might have. Yeah, I'm working. That's one of the ones I want to add to my collection because anything that has a Monster Hunter joke in the first episode needs to be in my anime collection. Okay, Devil is a Part-Timer. Yeah. We, we gotta talk All about right. that. Let's talk about Devil is a Part-Timer. <laughs> You had school start, so things got a bit crazy for you I had on top school, of COVID. I had school start. I had COVID. I had to adjust my work schedule, <laughs> which I kind of had to do last minute because of COVID and because of school starting. So you only got through the first six episodes, yes, you said. on top of the whole fish tank renovation thing. Yes. But yeah, I had a lot of work to do, and I didn't have too much free time. And the, t- the free time I did have, I spent sleeping. Okay. So. so you watched the first six episodes, but you said you have seen the whole thing, but it's been a long time. I have seen the whole thing, but when I watched it it was in middle school okay like seventh grade so i i um crammed in the last three days i watched all 13 episodes (laughs) (laughs) one of these days i'm actually gonna now i will say i have watched this at least twice but i think it was back when it came out in 2013 2014 because um i didn't know anime existed in 2013 so i've been a bit behind well i didn't really realize anime existed until after the year 2000 so (laughs) because that's when i started watching it was kind of around 2000 2001 (laughs) This show is what I would... Well, Devil is a part-timer. Let's start with the summary here. So, the devil... King Satan. King Satan is conquering the human realms in a fantasy world called Isla Ente. Or Ente Isla, depending depending on what version you watch. Yeah, it can go... I've seen it either way. And the hero, Amelia with the sacred sword, goes ahead and finally manages to get to his castle, starts fighting him. He's losing. He opens a gate, and he and his top general get sucked through the gate 
into modern day Japan. After vowing to come back and destroy them yes, all. Yes, after vowing coming back to destroy all of the humans. And then, like, an episode later, he is, King Satan is now a part-timer at a McRonald's, which is the <laughs> sideways step of McDonald's because they try not to break trademark on this show. And he's living in a, like, one-room flat. I think they call it a six-tatami room because a they can six- fix six tatami mats in there, along with ACL, his uh, general. LCL. LCL. LCL, his general say- and, in my opinion, in, in my personal definition, his mom friend. Yes. Because he's, he is King Satan, but like once he like actually like gets like a stable place to live in the human realm, he kind of turns into a nerd and well, a bit of a laser, a bit, a bit lazy too. Yeah, but he's also very serious about his part time job and getting better and getting a promotion. He wants to sell the most black pepper french fries yes. of all the restaurants in his district. Yes. And he, he is going to become manager one day. He, he has goals. <laughs> he, has, he has goals at McRonald's. His first step to taking over the world is to become manager of McRonald's. <laughs> Which I don't think that's how it works, but okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the only one who knows like how everything works is Alciel. And even then, he doesn't really listen to Alciel because he's too focused on his job at McRonald's. Well, and Alciel, quite honestly, is a little bit of a worrywart and is yeah um, gets a little overwrought very easily <laughs> like like there's a scene where um kind of spoiler but not really uh king satan gets attacked out of nowhere by a mysterious person mm-hmm. and alciel like loses his mind because he wasn't able to protect him yeah so he ha- like to a point where uh king satan has to like lock him in a closet to keep him from just like trying to throw himself at his feet and repent for his his mistakes yeah it, it's it, the humor in this is a little overblown, and I have to admit, it gets a little repetitive as it goes. Yeah, it's, I have it's, definitely seen better. It's very goofy, and they do kind of play the same joke multiple times mm-hmm. in multiple ways. In and... multiple ways, I've seen worse, but I've also seen better. Yeah, Zoe, your quick thoughts on this series, other than what you've already shared. Uh, I think it's 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 pretty fun. It's not the funniest thing in the world. I didn't laugh too much during it. Mm-hmm. I laughed a bit. There are a couple jokes that got yeah. me. There were moments that were amazingly well. There were done. moments that were great, but there there are I have some complaints. It's not the greatest thing. I've seen a lot of better stuff that are in like yeah. the same genre. So what kind of uh star rating would you give this? I give it three stars. Three stars? Three I stars. Admit, I decided on the same thing, three stars. I um if you had asked me before I did my rewatch, I probably would have told you four stars, but that's because my memory kept all the good bits and threw out everything I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about a lot of things that I yeah. I kinda wish I continued to forget about. <laughs> because the premise show is really good. As I said, it's just there's there's certain things and um the humor was not always the best. I'm going to say Spy Family did a lot better job on Spy Family was 100% better on almost every yeah, possible way. Because you laughed hysterically and had deep story. This was a, oh, that was funny. Oh, I know they're trying to be funny. Oh, so it's That was just, a joke, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there were a few moments like that. And so. there were a couple moments that were like, ooh, that's really cool. And then it yeah. didn't last very long. <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and get into some spoilers here then. A little bit of spoilers. A little bit yeah. of spoilers. So I mentioned that they come over from a foreign world where Satan is seen. Um, Satan is known in Japan as Sadao. Um, he goes ahead, and when he's in that fantasy world, he has like full Satan form. Like he's what eight feet tall, he's muscular, like eight horns, feet tall, muscular, goat feet, feet curled, curled horns, horns, giant cape, looks like Dracula, kind of. Yeah, yeah, a very, sk- a very, a very skinny, very bare faced version of Dracula. And, and, Alciel, his general, has I think he's got a tail like a he's got like a lizard tail. tail. He's got like a black like a black markings yes. over his eyes, it and looks he's like got shadow. like these weird um, elf ears, like really long elf ears that kind of, mm-hmm. they're kind of serrated a little bit. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, but when they show up in Tokyo, they have no magic and they revert to like completely human form. <laughs> so Sadao looks like the most basic anime protagonist you've ever seen. Yep. Like skinny, white shirt, black hair. Only thing that's different is his eyes, which are like red with like slits, like snake eyes. So that's the only thing about him that looks weird. And they also take generic Japanese names. So Satan becomes Sadao. Which is like an old person name. Yeah, apparently one. an old person name. And um, Alciel becomes Ashira. Ashira. I, like, I think Shiro Ashira, I think. Yeah, Shiro Ashira. Which I'm pretty sure Shiro just means, like, white. Mm-hmm. Which he is blonde, so I guess. Well, very, very platinum blonde if he's blonde. He's got white hair. 
Yeah, he he's it's got a bit of gold to it though. So I'm a little call, bit of gold. So I'm going to call shots. it platinum blonde. Very platinum blonde. I do like. I think the first episode probably has the most humor of all of them because you start out with this very serious, dramatic, like the world is being conquered. You see fire, flames, and like men's killing people. They did put a lot of effort into the world building. I think of mm-hmm. the other world because well, they, they speak a different language. Yeah, they actually do speak in a foreign language, like a, like a unique language. Mm-hmm. I was confused for a bit, wondering if I got the wrong version, <laughs> but then I realized, oh, those are Japanese subtitles. They're speaking yeah. a different language. Yeah, um, and then. When they go through the gate, you go from this very serious, high fantasy tone to <laughs> the police officer walking up to them and going, are you cosplaying? <laughs> are you guys cosplayers? Oh, are the, you foreigners? Are you oh, foreign? you're foreigners even. And, oh, you're cosplaying foreigners. Would you like to take a ride with me? <laughs> yeah. And then it's just, it's kind of interesting because you don't get to see very much of it, but they start setting up their life in Japan where <laughs> Satan has to like hypnotize people to find out information. They get ID cards. They get, their... they get, they get questioned in a police station yeah. and LCL completely demolishes a bowl of like udon or Katsu something. Udon. Katsu udon. Katsu udon. Which like, but they give him food and he, he's like a ma- He makes a mess. Yeah, he does. I will say one of the greatest moments of humor, though, for me, was in the first episode when Alciel tries to do magic and he does all these like crazy hand gestures, and a cab shows up with it, and it, the door opens, and he goes, "Look, sire, I conjured a chariot." And, when and really, Satan, and Satan just looks at him and goes, "I don't think that's how that works," <laughs> <laughs> because like he ends the gesture with his hand in the air, so of course the cab just kind of yeah, pulls up. Yeah. It's- so I, I like how um the only person who like retains his like sense of like medieval intensity is Alciel because yeah. Satan adapts very quickly. Oh, Sadal yeah. adapts very, very quickly. And then Alciel is still still calling him sire, still calling him my lord, his majesty. And referring bowing to him, and bowing and groveling at his feet when he messes well, and up. And later on, whenever any fights start happening and they um this is something I want to talk about is them getting their powers randomly back. Uh, whenever any fights happen, Alciel always has to go back to the house to get his cape. He's, he can't fight if he's not in his cape. He and, has to be, he's got to be dressed to impress, you yes. know? He's got to strike fear in the hearts of the lowly humans, that kind of thing. Yeah, but because of that, he usually misses the He fight. usually misses, like, half the fight. <laughs> he has to go back and get yeah. his outfit. So, as I said, some of that humor, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, Alciel, out of water. Alciel is my favorite character. Yeah. I like him a lot. Yeah. He's fun. A lot of that fish out of water type stuff. But they, they move away from that really fast. And, like, within two, three episodes, you're instantly at the point where <laughs> they're completely incorporated into Japanese life. It has been decided Alciel is just incapable of holding a job. <laughs> So he stays at home, does the laundry chores and the budget. He's like, he's kind of like become basically like Sadao's mom friend at this point. Because he like, he badgers him about the budgeting. Mm -hmm. He like tries to get, he tries to like... About things uh, and about eating healthy because he's complaining about the fact that they don't have any money for food. And Sadao is like, "Well, I can just bring food home from home. There's home from work, which that's McDonald's." (laughs) And Alcio's like, "You can't live on that. You cannot live on burgers (laughs) every day, my lord." And there's also a scene where uh, they get into a fight, and uh, one of the villains, um, like a priest from the old road, turns bad. Yeah. Uh, he met, he starts having like a villain monologue and Sadao interrupts him like you sound like a guy from an old from a bad B movie and then Alciel is like when did you watch a B movie? Have you been spending our hard earned money on movies? And it's now like let's, let's not talk about this right now. Let's please please about- tell me you're going to the matinee and not the expensive movie. <laughs> like, they have like a whole argument. <laughs> oh there's a scene where Alciel gets shot and he like tells him not to miss bargain day because he's injured <laughs> at the super. He's like he's, he's like bleeding out and he turns to yeah. it and he's, he's like sire be sure not to miss bargain day just because i'm out of commission i'm like what are you doing yeah as i said he he is probably number one humor character in this he's like the most humorous character him and emmy the hero character emmy actually so emmy the hero she also <laughs> winds up going through the gate and winding up in modern day tokyo and they don't meet until like several months after that's happened there's a lot of time skips in There's this. There's a lot of time skips. Emmy apparently is. She said she was older than she actually was. Apparently, yeah. She fudged thing. her. She fudged her ID. Apparently. I think Satan. I don't know if Satan fudged his ID or not. I mean, but... he probably has to, considering he's Satan. And I don't. I mean, I don't think anyone would believe if you're like. I'm assuming he's like something thousands of years old or something. They never really specify what his age is at all. <laughs> but going off of like other media that has like the character yeah, of Satan, he's always yeah. like hundreds of thousands so of years Emmy, old. So Emmy, I think we're 
I think she's around about in real life 18, but she lied and said she's 21. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is, and I think Sadao is some, he's older than 18 because at one point he has um, his other general that comes to live with them, Lucifer. Oh, Lucifer. <laughs> the emo hacker kid. The emo hacker kid. I'm, if I were to use my mom's exact terms, when she, because my mom actually watched an episode with me, and she was like, she looked, she saw, she sees him, and she's like, man, this Lucifer guy's a punk, <laughs> but like not in like the literal definition, like as yeah, in yeah. older people saying that you're really not fun. You're like, you're a punk, aren't you? That kind yeah. of thing. So and um, so Lucifer, Lucifer is, is down as He's 18, a cheeky boy, and. Sadao is his guardian, so he has to be older than 18. So I'm guessing he's probably put himself down at around 21 or so also. Even though 22. he looks like he's 15. Yeah, he looks 16. He looks very young. Alcio um, looks like he could be an adult, but like also not at the same time. He looks like a very young 20-ish. <laughs> very young 20-ish. Lucifer is fun. Lucifer is a goofy man. He's goofy. Lucifer, Lucifer is definitely in it for himself. I don't think he holds a whole great deal of loyalty to not Satan. really no considering he's very he's very, he's a lot more willing to like just be outright rude to him yeah even though yeah. satan beat the crap out of him when they when they first met after a while yeah lucifer did go ahead and beat him up quite a bit but he deserved it because because Luc- um or satan tried lucifer attacked him but then satan beat the ever-loving stuffing out of him yeah. after like a little bit of suspense yeah and it's <laughs> It's interesting because I think Lucifer decided that he was better off with Satan because he could browse the internet all he wanted. Yeah, they got him a computer. <laughs> they bought him a computer because he knows how to use it. Yeah, and they don't. Which I think is kind of fu- kind of a little funny detail that, that they don't know how to use a computer despite having integrated so well into human society. Yeah. Um, back to the hero, Emmy. She apparently works in a call center um, doing, like a, doing like a, a tech, tech, tech support, support tech for support. a company and their products. It's always really funny when uh, Satan winds up calling her at work because she's trying to be polite, but she just starts yelling at him. And then all of her coworkers like go around and go, what is wrong with you? Because Emmy is very, I guess, fiery. Fiery. She's very word. aggressive. And she gets very upset with anything that has to do with Satan. Like she instantly is angry. Which no makes what. sense because she's the protagonist and he's like the guy who was waging war on her entire homeland. Well, and she blames him for the death of her family <laughs> and the destruction of her home and everything. So. Which is a little bit. There's like a whole scene where she's try where she just she just kind of breaks down a little bit because she's followed him because she knows he's evil and all that stuff and she she devoted her life to vanquishing him. Well, and, and then she, she, she keeps following him all around town, watching him with everything he does, and he never does anything evil. Yeah, he never and does it's anything. It's driving her nuts because she's like, "Why is he being nice? Because what she, is wrong?" She knows he's committed several atrocities. He's yeah. he's a horrible human. He's a horrible peep person i I was gonna say human being but he's not human. no no he was a horrible person and then he goes to the human world he's all mellowed out and he's just like and he's helping people he's helping people he's being nice he has he's friends with his co-workers he's i mean he's got a job he he even has a human girl who wants to go on dates with him and he's so nice and he he accepts nicely and he seems to reciprocate uh, reciprocate reciprocate what (laughs) he seems to reciprocate (laughs) a little bit of that just a little bit it's it's kind of interesting. So the uh, relationship between Chiho, his coworker, and uh, Sadao, Satan, is a little interesting because I think it's mostly one sided on Chiho's side. Yeah, because Sadao seems to only really he, just like he, do it because they're coworkers. He likes her, but not I think in a romantic way. Like he just thinks sense. they're like friends slash. They're just like. They're like mutual workers, right. something like that. But he was willing to call it when they met together at the train station. He was willing to call it a date. I think mostly because he knew that would make Chiho happy. So he's mostly just playing along, really. He's not yeah. like super. I don't know because he he never really seems, but he doesn't seem interested in anybody else either. So he's, it's also probably because he's the devil. Yeah, and I think yeah. he's not like I've seen variations in a lot of shows of the devil where he's where the devil's always like a player. Like a lot, has got like a lot of yeah, stuff but like Sadao that. Doesn't and really... Sadao just doesn't seem interested in any of that. No, he doesn't seem to be Which a is player. Interesting. He's not. Yeah, it's there is um. So the end of it, which I don't know how well you remember because it's been a while since you've seen it. Sadao makes a comment that he always tries to protect and guard what is his, 
And I think he sees the McRonald's employees as like his his um his people, his family. Because so he, he has, got because he got like promoted to like supervisor. Yeah, shift manager. Shift manager. So Which like means, in a way he's kind of ruling over them a yeah, little bit. He, they're now his, his peons and he his has to subordinates. Take, his subordinates and he has to take care of them. His McDonald's and so subordinates. I'm not, so I'm not sure how much of Chio is him actually liking her or him seeing her as a um, as a subordinate to be treasured. I'm pretty sure it's just one sided, and also I want to make sure I don't. I want to make this clear. I don't really care for Chiho or any of the romantic subplot or, or quote unquote romantic, romantic subplot. subplot. Yeah, I, I don't admit, really. That's the part that got a little bit old because there was a lot of yelling with girls back and forth about Sadao, and Sadao was just being like, "I don't care." Because like, I was with, I was with Sadao on this one. Like, I don't care about any of this. I just want to see him do things as. A, I want to see him do devil things. I want to yeah. see him do. I want to get them. I want to see them get up to non-romantic shenanigans. Yeah, and that's where I think a lot of the show fell down. Is the humor became very romance based, and it, I really don't care for and, romantic humor. Yeah, a lot of it just really doesn't work. It just winds up being people yelling at each other about things that aren't important. Yeah, and the thing is, the show to me wasn't originally set up to be a romance. And I have a feeling there was like an editor or something like that had to propose it or something. That or or they just didn't know how to properly like that put it or in. I will say this series is based on a light novel. The light novel has twenty seven volumes. Ooh, yeah, this is a very long involved story. So no wonder people wanted a season two. Yeah, so who knows? This romance might have been developing all through the first, second, third, fourth book, and it just and it just but when felt- they. When they put it in the the anime, anime, it just gets condensed and feels a lot. I have a feeling that kind of thing would have been fit better if they put it like later on and like after introducing all of the main cast instead of just. I also think it just quite honestly might have fit better in a book and not in this format. Yeah. Because the way they. Because you can't. They didn't do a very good job of showing what half the characters felt and getting it only from that one side. It didn't feel very complete somehow. And also, I just. There were a couple of things I had problems with, but I can't mention them here. Yeah, let's just say some of the humor was probably more TV-16 than TV-14. A bit, bit risque, I guess. Yeah, yeah. A bit like um, with the landlady. <laughs> okay, I have to admit, I don't know how risque that is. That is just kind of hysterically funny. Yeah, okay. I, I just wanted a reason to bring her into this. I, I was looking for an opening to bring her into okay. this. The landlady of their of their like uh, apartment slash flat or whatever it is. Well, they're, she... they're, they're six to Tommy Matt apartment, which they call the Devil's Castle. <laughs> Even though it's <laughs> the most barren apartment I've ever seen. And very run down. Very, and very, run-down. very, yeah. But their landlady, who introduces herself and says, call me me kitty... <laughs> Has a very flamboyant hat. Um, she you, dresses like um, the t- like the w- you said this before. The, the wicked witch, witch of the waste. The witch of the waste from Howl's Moving Castle. She dresses a lot like that. And there's a, there's a name for that kind of style, but I don't remember what it's I called. Don't know what it is? But it's got like the big old hat, the, and the big, big dress. hat, the little tiny bag, the like the pearl necklace, mm-hmm. and she's like a very round woman. Yeah, so she, she looked, looks a lot like the witch. Of the a waist. lot like the witch of the waist, a bit smaller though. Yeah, it's like a shawl over her yeah, shoulders. Yeah, and and she's short though because she's shorter than Sadao, I think. Yeah, but, but she's also very. She's a very mysterious character, and I think she's part of the reason why people really wanted a second season because she actually mentions things about Lucifer and things she shouldn't know. That they come from a different world. Like she stuff. knows a lot of things that she has no reason knowing, and it's like. It's she's really interesting in that yeah. way, but she, she, you almost never see her though for the entire show. And when you do see her, it's usually for comedic purposes, like yeah. that, like, like the, the picture of her on vacation in Hawaii. Like she sends them a letter that has a picture of her on vacation, and like just all three of the demons, Lucifer, Alciel, and Satan. Every, when they just by looking at the picture, they pass out, which they call it their talisman against demons, <laughs> which because <laughs> because it made the king of demons pass out. Yeah, so. I mean, like they took one look at it and just like fr- just pfft. yeah, so not in a good way too. No, not in no. like a drop dead gorgeous way. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Some of the humor in this just was not very. It didn't really fit with it the didn't vibe. Fit with the vibe of the series. It and... looked like it would fit in more in. It felt like it was more suitable in like those the regular cut and dry isekai anime. That or an an anime that was more of a pure harem anime. Which yeah, I think like this, a really. Which this was starting to lean a lot into. 
Which um, I was, like, I didn't, type. I didn't like that. <laughs> well, you're you're not a fan of harem anime. No, I'm not, because I think they're <laughs> dumb. I think they're really dumb, and they don't have action scenes. And I like action scenes. Well, I mean, I guess a couple of them do, but like they're not actually action scenes. They're just like pretend action. They're like girl slaps a guy hard enough he flies across the room, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I've seen my friend likes hair. I have a friend who loves that kind of stuff and she's always showing them to me and I hate them, but I don't have the heart to tell her I hate them because she loves them so much and she's my friend. So I, I don't like it. <laughs> well, it's I, know, it's a bit of I, I know a lot of people who hate isekai anime and I can completely understand it because yeah, there's I, a lot of really bad tropes in isekai. <laughs> You have to go through about 30 really bad ones to find the one that's watchable. <laughs> yeah, and I, I get that too because it's just... This is an example of a pretty good one. It's pretty good. It's not stellar. It's, it's not, not It's not... I've seen a lot better, but I it's, one of, it's Log, one of the better Log ones. Log Horizon is much better in my opinion. Log Horizon, uh, Slime. The time I got oh, reincarnated is a slime. slime. Mouthful of a title every single time. Well, another one I really like is By the Grace of the Gods. Bofuri? Bofuri is amazing. Bofuri. <laughs> Bofuri is fun. Bofuri is a lot of fun. But that one is also kind of nice because cause the one that I haven't seen the one it. I was watching that was more like a high fantasy style was um, Far Away Paladin. That was a really good one. One I started, which I don't know if it's going to be any good or not, but it's very run of the mill, is this um, world leading medical researcher overworks himself to death literally in his office and gets reincarnated into this family in a medieval type I think fantasy I've heard of that world. one. I think I've heard and, of that one. And um, supposedly everybody there is really good doctors. And he goes, uh, no, they're not actually really good doctors. They, they are peddling they, snake oil and this is, He's like, that's just a vitamin drink. That actually won't do anything for your fever. But he's been given those magical powers that apparently he has to keep secret because they're so abnormal that he can now create medicine and stuff. So it's like pharmacy in another world or something. <laughs> I, remember, I remember seeing about a, a review video on YouTube about talking about that show. I don't remember what it was called. Mm -hmm. And another show that has basically the same premise, but it's done worse. Okay. I think it's called um, Pharmacy in Other Worlds, something like that. Yeah. It's like As really basic and not funny. And it's, <laughs> based on what I've seen of it, it was not, that version of it was not good. But so, this one sounds interesting. So we would say that The Devil is a Part-Timer in the Field of Isekai is probably a good solid above the median or right on the median. I think right on the median. Right on the median. Because it's it's creative, it's interesting, but it does fall victim to some tropes that I really don't care for. Yeah, and that tend to show up in Isekai a lot for some reason. And also, the animation is actually not that bad in some of the... the no, it isn't. In the action shots, it's very smooth and very yeah. cool. Before we wrap up here real quick, I wanted to discuss their magic real quick, because mm -hmm. um, I was kind of intrigued by this. So apparently, when disasters happen... And humans get freaked out and scared. Satan gets all his power back, and he's able to do all these massive things. Because like he's because he's things. like feeding off of their yeah. Like, he fear feeds off and fear then... and despair. To and get Luc power. Lucifer does that yeah. when he first shows up. Yeah, and, and he tries to kill Satan, and it doesn't work out at all. Um, oh, one I forgot to mention. What this is off topic a little bit, but one moment that kind of had me rolling is when when lucifer comes in with this like old priest guy who was like a friend of emmy the hero mm -hmm. um he pulls a gun out oh, the he, priest pulls a the gun. priest pulls like a pistol out it's like a glock on someone and just shoots him and i don't know why but the image of like this old aging like wizard in like fancy robes just pulling like a a, like a yeah. pistol on somebody. There, there was something. There, there was something kind of funny, just because it didn't seem to match at all. He was just. He just pulled a Glock on him and just. Poof, yeah. Just shot him right in the shoulder, well, which was really stupid. So my question is, why does it take a large disaster or something? That freaks a whole ton of people out for Satan to get any power back. Maybe because it's, maybe it's you would the think adrenaline? just walking through a hospital, he would be able to get power. Maybe it's the adrenaline. Or like so, just like the panic, or maybe just the sheer broadcasting of the instant panic spurt. Just like the sh just like the massive spike in like panic and like adrenaline levels okay. or something. Probably it. But because he d gets his power from a different source, than Emmy gets hers. Because Emmy actually has a friend who somehow from another world manages to send her, in essence, a energy drink that she drinks every morning <laughs> to keep her powers up. <laughs> so which is. Like <laughs> That's that's. I, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I mean, her friend, who apparently is an alchemist slash magician, has somehow managed to create a phone connection between the two worlds. So they also talk constantly. And I was like, <laughs> you are now stretching things You're, a little bit. Like, why can't Satan do that? He's got yeah. generals back there, too, but they're all in hiding. Yeah, that's true. They're all in hiding now because his army's been defeated. Yeah, as I said, this series leaves a lot of questions open at the end, though, because you're questioning, you know, what's going on into Isla. Um, why is Satan the way Satan is? There's all kinds of, they hint at all kinds of, like, conspiracy within the church, within, and the rulers. Yeah, they're hinting and... at, like, the church, like, trying to, like, maintain control over Ente Isla, because they said that, the church said that Emmy and her allies were all killed. Yeah, because, and apparently by saying, no, that's a lie, she's actually alive, is enough to make the church send people to kill you, so. Which is a little, ah. So that, I mean, as I said, there's a, there's a little bit of a deeper story going on, but I feel like it got buried a lot. By, by the not good stuff. By the a not cu- good By stuff. a couple of not good important yeah. things. Yeah. Like an entire episode that was literally just uh, Lucifer tricking Satan and Alciel <laughs> to go find his PS Vita, which he left in a classroom. Which was um, also had very clearly marked on it that it was not a PS Vita. It was a pasta. It was a pasta. <laughs> just like they wound up in a coffee shop at one point. That was definitely not Starbucks. It was Moonbucks. <laughs> <laughs> And Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> is not in this show. It's Sentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and it's also run by an angel. Yeah. Ha- but the angel is not an angel. Angel is definitely not no, an angel. No, 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 no. He think he calls himself one. He's got wings, but he's not an angel. No, no, no. no. Um, let's just say Satan is better than the angel. <laughs> Satan has better morals than, than the, the angel, angel, which is not a good sign. Never a good sign. One more thing I'd like to mention. I, I'm just kind of throwing out random things that I'm remembering as we're talking at this point. Okay. But uh, on topic of Lucifer again, I don't know why, but I, I remember I went to like a kind of an isekai binge when I first discovered anime where I just found random shows and just looked at them. Mm-hmm. And the ones where demons were like a big present, I don't remember all of them, but the character of Lucifer was almost always depicted as like a nerd. Like, a nerd on a computer who's, like, really? really into, like, pop culture stuff. Hmm. But, like, people, like, just, like, a, he's always depicted as, like, the guy who just, like, hides in his room and just, like, messes around with, like, human technology or looks at scrolls all the time. Like, almost every, I don't know why I remember this so well, but I remember seeing a lot of shows where the character of Lucifer is almost okay. always depicted as, like, a nerd. Now, like I, a closeted nerd. I have to admit, my favorite, um, one of my favorite animes that deals with like the afterworld and Lucifer and Satan and stuff is Hosaki's The Cool Headedness of Oh Hosuki. yeah, that I have that. I, that's a, that's a that's a fun one. <laughs> that is a fun one because um, Hosaki is kind of like Enma's the King of Hell's Japanese King of Hell's right hand man or ogre in this case with a giant spike club. And they actually have like diplomatic relations with European hell, so you get to meet Satan in there. But that, which is always kind of interesting. And then the way they show Satan, he's he's fun. He's like an awkward dude. Yeah, he's like an awkward CEO. <laughs> he's like an awkward CEO. Doesn't know where he's going. Yeah. And he looks like a very cartoony version of Satan. Like he's got the the the, the fork tail, big massive mm-hmm. horns, hunched over, red skin, claws, goat goat feet. Yeah. I that as I said, anime has actually done a lot with Satan or at least devil kings in the past, and I think that's going to keep being popular. Satan is uh, the devil is a part timer. Sadao actually, when he gets his full form, is more Satanish than a lot of other devil kings are. Because like you, sh- in I remember I I went down a rabbit hole of like YouTubers talking about like religious study and stuff like that, and like mm-hmm. analyzing bits and stuff like in the Bible and all that. In Satan is depicted as the most beautiful, like, angel before he fell from grace. He was, like, the most beautiful dude well, in that, existence. Um, and, they ca- and they kind of translate that into this one where he goes from, like, just, like, really wimpy 16-year-old to a big buff dude with big horns <laughs> and goat feet. I do like the fact that every time he changes back into a Satan form, he has um, one broken horn. Because right before he transferred through the gate, Emmy broke one of his horns with her sword. And he also gains, like, a 16-pack. Yes. <laughs> He, like, turns into a JoJo character or a Baki character or yeah, something like yeah. that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up. So for an isekai, not bad, but it could be better. It could be better. If they just cut some things out and focused on other, like, aspects, it could be better. Focus more on the story, less <laughs> and less on bad jokes. And fan service. Yeah. Less on that, too. And less on the fan service. Which, opening and closing of this anime, 
I have to admit, completely forgettable. Very forgettable. I, I watched them through the first time, and then I just hit skip every other single time. The songs weren't great. The the in, the, um, the animation the, is actually the, not that bad. The opening wasn't terrible. I do like the fact that it shows both of them getting up in the morning. I find the opening irritating. But the song is the irritating. The song is irritating. And the end credits song is even more irritating. There's actually three different end credits songs. There's three different ones? Yep. They're and, all, they're all, they all blend together. Yeah, and they all sound alike, which I found very sad. Because one thing that has to be like crucial for a good anime is the opening and the ending have right. to be bops. They have to be good songs. At least the opening has. At to least be, the that's opening. That's usually what drags you in. Uh, yeah, it has to be at least so, some kind of which good is, song. Which is why I'm pretty sure this was pretty early in the isekai blooming because they didn't have to try as hard to drag you in. No, they didn't. They really because the did. title was enough to already get you at least watching the first episode. Yeah, I really don't like the intro for this show. I really yeah. don't like it. On that note, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, did you have any last thoughts after that? Not really. No. Like you said, it's a, the show's a bit forgettable. It is. It's which is fun. Kind of too it's, bad. It's fun for the moment. But you don't remember much of it when you're and, done. And as I said, I think part of it is because there's been so much isekai since, and it's been done a bit better. Yeah, since. it's been very, the, the genre is very oversaturated. There's way right. too much out there. Which is, I, as I said, I'm kind of surprised they chose now to do the second season because I think it would have probably gotten a lot more splash if they had done it like, like right after the first one. Because like right now, you're getting a new isekai every year, pretty much. Uh, you're getting like s- ten. Oh, every, every like every, every like six months. Every six months, there's a whole new. Batch it's like there's like a whole bunch of them, and they're all the same. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, Zoe, to talk about the devil as a part timer. Thank all of you guys for listening to us and joining us in our discussion here. If you have any thoughts or comments about our episode, you can go ahead and email us at the email address that's in the show notes. I don't know what we're going to be watching for next month. I have a feeling it might be a movie. I'm leaning towards a movie. Yeah, so schedules under- are schedules are getting a bit yeah, busy, so longer series might be a bit off the table for a little sc- bit. School is starting, and you said it's gotten a l- it's a little off to us. It's a very start. very. They're giving us a lot of work in the first couple weeks. Yeah, so I think we're gonna do a movie, maybe something Miyazaki, maybe something off Netflix. We'll talk about it and make up our minds. Welcome to the school year. <laughs> I'm not ha- I'm not enjoying it so far. Well. When you have any time, go ahead and join us in watching a ton of anime. (laughs) Goodbye. Bye, y'all.